Good morning. Bart's done a good job welcoming us all here as we came in, and I'd also like to welcome you and those online to worship this fifth Sunday of Easter. Doing the beautiful music is Lee Kirsten. Reading our lessons today will be Karen Schultz. Ray Milky will be giving us the message. And Thursday I got a text from Sherry that Sharon daughter from Colorado was planning a surprise visit here this weekend and if there was anybody who could serve as worship leader this morning I ignored the message to begin with <laughs> which I do quite often it's like well maybe it'll go away if <laughs> if I ignore it long enough but then later in the day a thought popped into my head that maybe God wanted me here this morning to do this so after that, I couldn't ignore it anymore. So I sent Sherry back the message and said that I would do it. And I got a message from Sharon this morning that it was a total surprise. So, and she was very happy that her daughter was here. So we can all, all praise God. Uh, please stand if you are able for the Thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is water. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Please join me in the prayer. O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first song is Alleluia, Jesus is Risen, number 377.
Our first reading is found in Acts chapter 8. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is found in 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given of us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this way that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us, 
Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand now for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter, beginning at verse 1. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you ask whatever and whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the gospel of our Lord. may be seated. We have a children's sermon for the young at heart. <laughs> okay, all right. I have some participation from with the young at heart. <laughs> I didn't bring my candy. Good morning, children. Good morning. Good morning. I can see that because you're all younger than me. <laughs> okay, so any of you know the song, This Little Light of Mine? Okay, and how does that go? Can you start? This, this little light of mine. Okay, while well, you're doing that, I'm going to turn this on. Uh oh. Oh, what's wrong? It's not plugged in. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess I can't let my light shine. Okay. All right, you can start singing again. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Very good. Give yourselves a hand. <laughs> Okay, so the light had to be plugged in in order to work, right? Okay, so what do I have here? A stick, that's a, a branch. Does this branch have any leaves on it? No. And this branch before would have lost all its leaves, it probably would have produced some leaves or some fruit, right? So it, without being alive, there's no connection, there's no fruit. And just like the light has to be connected to electricity to shine, there also has to be some life in this to help it to produce fruit. And with Jesus in us, we can produce fruit. So we have to be connected, as we heard about Jesus being the vine and the branches, we have to be connected to Jesus to bear fruit. And... One more thing here, if I can find it in my bag. Would you like to hold on to my dead branch, please? <laughs> here we go. Okay. All right. 
so if we think about we think about this perhaps being Jesus and if we connect to Jesus I didn't bring any strings but if we connect to Jesus we're going to have faithfulness, faithfulness kindness. kindness can you read that from there patience, patience yes Goodness. Goodness, yes. So if we would kind of use our imagination and say this is Jesus and these are all, we're connected to Jesus, we're going to have all these qualities because cause we're connected to Jesus. So we re need to remember to always stay connected to Jesus. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus to be our branch and let us be produce good fruit in his name. Amen. Do we have any candy to share with our guests today? Oh, yes, we do. Oh, we do? Okay. All right. And after, oh, see, I got to thinking, after getting the message, I should have had fruit snacks, and there are actually some in here because it would be very appropriate for the fruit. So you can take what you want, and thanks for coming up. Oh, I should put two of them? Sure. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. You need Christ in your life. John 15, 4 says, Remain in me, and I in you. This makes your light shine. Jesus in your life completes the circuit. Without Jesus in your life, you're like a dead battery waiting to be charged. And the more Jesus you put in your life, the more of him comes out. Your life on earth is like a drop in the ocean compared to the eternal life with Jesus. What do you gain with Christ in your life? Are you witnessing Christ's life in your life? If so, it will show on display. What is the fruit of Christ? I would say it's his attributes, love, forgiveness, acceptance, patience, and when you learn these things, you abide in him. These qualities are nurtured in you, and then you bear fruit. Bearing fruit is a sign of reproduction. The goodness that comes out of you is not for you. Our fruit is for those around us. Our fruit is the sign of our relationship with Christ and is a tool for building up people God has placed in our lives. To explain this a little better, I came upon a book by Robbie Galtry, and it's titled Bearing Fruit. And he says, fruit is not meant to be consumed by the tree growing it. In the same way, the fruit you bear is not for you to consume, but for the benefit of those around you. Your self-control it's not for you. It's for your brother, your neighbor, your spouse. Your kindness, it's not for you. It's for your children, your co-workers, and strangers on the street. Your gentleness, it's not for you. Your patience is not for you. In Matthew 5, verse 16, it says, you should be a light for other people Live so that they will see the good things you do and will praise your Father in heaven. We just returned from a trip to Florida, and I found people to be very courteous and helpful amid the hustle and bustle of a larger city. If you extend politeness for the most part, it's returned. On the beach, I was wearing a Wisconsin t-shirt and I was approached by other Midwesterners with the line, we assumed you were friendly, being from the Midwest, and we continued a brief conversation. And apparently, my ultra-white legs didn't scare anyone off, or if they did, I was unaware. 
The fruit of the Spirit in your life is meant for the lost world around us, dying to see the gospel manifested through us. Abiding in Christ is a slow moving process, but don't be discouraged. The slowest growing trees sometimes bear the sweetest fruit. The same principle is true of our spiritual lives. As a disciple who makes disciples, you won't only be looking for, to the example of others, others will be looking to your example. And this eliminates the possibility of saying, well, I don't care what people think about what I'm doing. I'm not hurting anybody but myself by living this way. In truth, you're hurting everyone around you by sinning. Those you know well and those you don't. If you claim allegiance to Christ, there will be people watching you, whether you like it or not. Being Christian is a hard life to follow. Living in a world we do, we have a mountain of obstacles trying to lead us astray. The devil's mission in this world is to do the opposite of Jesus' teaching. In verse 4, Jesus says, Remain in me, and I will remain in you. You cannot produce fruit on your own. Our faith is known to others through the good deeds that overflow from our character. And I had this thought about the phrase, God bless you. In order for you to say it, you must believe it. And if you believe it, you've been blessed. And you're sharing your fruit. As you search for those whom you use to set your example, just make sure that Jesus is at the top of that list. And I came upon this story of a son and a father, and near the end it coexists with our relationship with God. And he says, my father loves to build and show classic cars. But when I was a kid, I wasn't interested in metal and rubber. I desired to talk with him about Legos and G.I. Joes and model cars. Even though it was beneath him, he would stoop to my level to converse about things I loved. He listened when I talked about my plans for customizing a scooter. He played alongside when I set up mock battle battles with my army men. And he participated in build building Lego towers at the table with me. We regularly talked about Hot Wheels and constructed model cars together. He did this because he was my dad. He loved hearing about matters that were important to me. And still he longed for the day when we could discuss things that were important to him as well. And eventually, I matured and began to discuss topics he enjoyed. We worked together for many years, visiting car auctions, finding deals on wheels, and customizing the bargains we would find. I wanted things that were dear to his heart, and I found that in doing so, they became dear to my heart as well. And our relationship with God is the same. Even though our conversation is beneath him at times, he listens to us, and still he longs for the day when we will share his heart. In Romans 1, verse 13, Paul references that he wants to go to Rome. He says, I want to have a harvest among you. Paul's motivation for going there was to have a fruitful ministry among them, meaning leading people to Christ. He wants to come to Rome to see more people put their faith in Christ, to be forgiven for their sins, and, be, and to be welcomed into the family of God. We are worthy of bearing fruit until we take our last breath. And it's entirely possible we continue to impact others after we're long gone. And I think the Bible proves this point. A comparison to this was relevant 
Two weeks ago, we were at a party with friends, and in the yard was an old apple tree, well past its beauty years, showing scars and broken limbs. And it's safe to say, as far as tree goes, trees go, it was an ugly reminder of what it once was. But on that one limb that remains, it grows branches, it sprouts leaves, and it still delivers sweet apples to the owner. In Galatians 5, verse 22, Paul talks about nine fruits that produced, produced by the Spirit. The first three fruits are love, joy, and peace. These are habits of the mind. The next three, patience, kindness, and goodness. These are things expressed to others. And the final three, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, describe the conduct of the believer. Jesus lived his life with all of these attributes. And he left us with the Holy Spirit to help us live as he did. Amen. And our next song is page 708. Please stand if you are able and join me in confessing the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers are on the prayer sheet you received. Following our shepherd's teachings, we come to prayer with a humble and thankful heart. Loving God, may we never forget to show hospitality to strangers. It provides us the opportunity to be a disciple of faith in action. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, please bring relief for those suffering in body and spirit. May we find relief from our problems by remembering you give us the strength to cope and that by your grace, you will help us through it. Today we pray for Amy, Ann, Arnold, Becky, Beverly, Bonnie, Braden, Carol, Corinne, Darla, Dave, Dave, David, Denise, Dorothy, Gloria, Jack, Jaden, Jackie, James O, Jerome, Jerry, Karen, Christy, Larry, Mary, Nancy, Nathan, Patty, Rachel, Sandy, Scott, and Will. And we ask you to comfort the family of Mary Lehman as they mourn her death. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, too often we allow rules and doctrine to block the purpose of the mission we have entrust, you have entrusted in our care. Loving people the way your son Jesus did, bounds us as a disciple of our faith. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, sometimes we get too carried away trying to be right. They, we forget to be kind. It is our job to be, it is not our job to be hall monitors of other people's conduct. Help us to realize it is our job to listen, to care, to help, and to understand. God of grace, here. Loving God, when our lives hit difficult times, help us to remember to look for you amid our difficulties. You are the guide along the path we need to trust to get us through whatever is our destiny. God of grace. <clears throat> Loving God, no book is a chapter. No chapter tells the whole story. Likewise, no mistake defines who you are. How humble to know that because of your grace, you can turn our lives into a story of redemption. God of grace, hear our prayer. Please join me with everlasting thanks and joy for your love and forgiveness. We ask you to be with us till we meet again. 
this week help us to take every opportunity to be thankful for the blessings of each day. Help us to pay attention to how best we can be a gift to others. May we approach each day with soul, serving others, uplifting lives. We ask all in the name of your dear Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated for this morning's offering. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Amen. We pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. I'm only going to highlight a couple of the announcements that pertain to this week. There are more announcements on your sheet that you can read for yourself, and if you're online, I think they will be in the Spirit Alive, which should be coming out this coming week. So you can read them there. The, a meeting for the compromands, parents and mentors will be this Wednesday, May 1st, after worship service. And if you are graduating, please have your name, your full name, a picture of yourself and your future plans into the church office by the next Monday. Does anybody have any other announcements that they'd like to share? Any s celebrations we want to share? Let's see, do I have anything else? Oh, yes, your prayer sheet. If you look, there's, it's got two sides. You take it along home with you, and you have prayers for the coming week. That was the other thing I wanted to mention. And our last hymn is On Our Way Rejoicing, number 537.
receive the blessing. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, go in peace, rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Have a rejoicing week. Good message, Ray. Thank you, Dan.